I used to be one of those guys who thought that he could figure it all out on his own. I thought that I had my whole life under control and that no matter what, I would be successful. But it couldn't have been more wrong, as I spent years jumping from business model to business model, and not only did I not make money, I actually lost thousands in the process. For the knowledge and experience you need to be successful, you either pay with time or you pay with money. Those who don't invest in mentorship or business coaching are the ones who pay with time, and most of them quit because the path to having a successful online coaching business is extremely long and extremely unforgiving. Most coaches and YouTubers won't share what I'm about to share with you in this video today. And look, I'm not just saying that to have more impact or make you watch to the end or anything like that. Um, I've just genuinely never witnessed anybody talk about this, to be honest. So I'm going to give you the juice. I'm going to tell you who I worked with, what my experience was like with each one of these people, and I'm going to give you exactly what I learned so that you can go and make a more informed decision on mentorship, buying into business mentors. Now, one thing I will say is I'm not going to give the prices away because I don't know if that's public information that they've released themselves, but... One thing I will say is that the final one on this list was considerably more expensive and I've spent considerably more with him than I have with anybody else. So first mentor, Rob Quinn. You can go search him on Instagram. You're going to find a super well-educated sales type person. Now, the pros of this was he gave me my first ever DM script. He gave me my first ever framework, gave me my first ever coaching on actually booking calls through the DMs. I had weekly calls where I could get to talk with his team and sometimes Rob himself. That's another thing that you need to know about these big programs that you might be entering. If you're looking up to a mentor or a coach or a creator online, if you join their program, it's not always the case that you'll actually get to speak to them. That's just the reality of it. They have such a big client base and such a big team that they can afford to have coaches come in and coach you guys instead of doing it themselves, which is not something I'm against. But if that's something that is important to you, then that's important to know. When looking into these kind of things, that's a question that you can ask. Introduce me to a certain type of sales culture, which I was new to. Now, I was very much not pushy right? And I know that sounds strange, like, should you be pushing in sales? Well, my opinion now is yes, because if you are pushing somebody to become their best possible selves, if you're pushing somebody to, you know, buy into a fitness program or something like that, where they are potentially going to add years onto their life by learning what you teach them, if they are going to instill healthy habits onto their children and their children's children, saving multiple lives, right? And creating generational health. Think about the impact that that has. When I say it like that, it sounds a little bit more easy to be pushy now, doesn't it? So, I, was, I wasn't that way inclined when I joined the program and they really introduced me to that sort of form of sales and that type of culture, which was actually really good. It was meant to be a 90, so here's the cons now. It was meant to be a 90 day program, but for some reason after 60 days, they actually shut the program down. I wasn't mad because like it still did the job, but you know, it's not perfect. If you join a program, make sure that they are well organized, make sure that they're not in the middle of a rebrand. I've been in a few mentorships paid for courses in the past where they like rebrand halfway through and it just gets kind of confusing. I don't see the point in it. Just stick with somebody who you can tell is kind of got longevity in what they're currently doing. So another con is that their upsells and the coaches were also salespeople. So Sorry, there are upsells and the coaches are also salespeople is the way I should have said that. And what I mean by this is that when you go into the coaching calls, the coaching calls are hosted by salespeople, meaning that they will upsell you during the coaching calls. Sometimes it felt like you were being primed more into buying the next program rather than actually being coached towards getting results. Again, this is like the downside to that certain sales culture. Would I have been better off if I joined the higher tier program? Maybe, who knows? But uh, it was kind of annoying at the time. The culture of their team was very sales driven, like I said, which I respect. This is the, the third con on the list, which is something that I respect, but it also has its cons. I still get calls from their team to this day actually trying to sell me into their program, which like we said, it might not necessarily be a con, but they haven't even took notes on like who I am, what I do, and they just seem to have no idea who I am every time they call me, even though I've already paid them a bunch of money, um, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars to speak to them. So that's also a little bit like... I don't know. Anyway, moving on to the second mentor, we have Jeremy Montoya. So the first one with Rob Quinn, that was very much a group coaching program. Jeremy Montoya was still a group coaching, but he was more on the one-to-one -one side, which is actually really good. So the pros of working with Jeremy was he genuinely wanted to get results. Like this is really important when you go into a mentorship. You've got to be able to identify what somebody's true motives are. And if you can tell that they want to make money, like if they're, this sounds very obvious, but if they're driving around in Lamborghinis, you know, living up on the beach or whatever, 
then likelihood is they're probably selling more of a dream, which again, I'm not against, but they might be more money driven than they are results driven. If they're not doing any of that, and you can tell that they're just very passionate about getting people results, all their content just embodies that, and that's the feeling that you get, then that's a really, really powerful sign. And Jeremy absolutely had that. So pro number two was he was actually a human being. Uh, some some mentors feel like robots that you pay to dispense information from. Some people are so stuck in the, let's call it the high ticket coaching matrix or the online entrepreneur matrix that they literally just are a living, walking, breathing framework. And it's so strange to talk to them because they will literally talk to you constantly in sales framework or like, coaching framework or like content framework language and it's so creepy and weird jeremy was good because he was very much human Uh, you know same goes for the next mentor as well in fairness but jeremy was very much that and also he wasn't that far off the level i'm in my business so it was closer to home and he was able to meet me where i was at a lot better which is very important if your mentor's just like oh it's easy go make 100k in a month it's like dude that's what i'm trying to do all right Um, And they have no sympathy for the struggles that you're going through, whereas Jeremy did, which is, you know, you don't need sympathy to grow, but it certainly helps for morale time to time if you're getting disheartened and whatnot, which is inevitably going to happen. Um, You've got to have somebody to help keep your spirits up. He helped me develop introspection towards myself as a business owner, arguably one of the most important things a business owner can do. This wasn't something that I was doing before I met Jeremy. I wasn't sitting down journaling and writing what was going on in my brain towards my business or any kind of introspection or reflection on the day-to-day actions and happenings of the business. And Jeremy helped me sit down and do that. To this day, I still sit and write about what's gone on. I will very much introspect on myself and think, am I doing the right things? What do I need to do next? And that's been really good for things like this, for example. It allows me to speak very, um, sorry, (laughs) I was going to say, it allows me to speak way more clearly, and then I messed up my words. It allows me to speak way more clearly, articulate things in a more concise way, and get my message across better. So the cons. He didn't give access to the course straight away and it was all call recordings and not an actual course. This is something that course creators do sometimes and they're like, hey bro, don't worry, like it saves a bunch of time if you do this, where they'll film a live coaching call and then that will just be the course. I am personally not a fan of this. If you want to become one of the best coaches, one of the best service providers out there, just don't do this. It doesn't work. There, there is room to have that like pre-recorded content and the recordings of the calls in your course, but just distinguish where they actually are and make sure you tell people the difference. Because if you sit down to watch a call and it's just a pre-recorded, sorry, sit down to watch a course and it's just pre-recorded calls, it's not that great. Uh, He was in the middle of a rebrand as well, which kind of made using resources confusing, but again, not a big deal. For me, it wasn't tactical enough. Too many coaching questions and not enough instructions. So as you're getting into the coaching space, what you're going to realize is there's this kind of series and way of asking questions, which is very much the coach's way, where they'll try to get you to answer your own question and kind of lead yourself down the path, which is, don't get me wrong, a good quality in a coach. But every now and again, you just need to be told what to do. And Jeremy didn't do this really at all. He actually just kind of got me to answer my own questions. And of course, the answers are in there, but it still didn't give me the exact direction that I needed in comparison to my third mentor, which we'll move on to now, who was Jason Fox. So Jason Fox is actually the mentor and coaching business who I still pay and I'm still with to this day. Um, He's helped me a tremendous amount and I expect I'll be with him for, for an extended period of time and in the future. So pros, he is an insanely talented entrepreneur himself, more than anyone else I've worked with. And I don't say this to like blow smoke up Jason's ass or anything like that, but some of the stuff that he pulls off and just some of the interactions that I've seen him have in in a coaching setting, to me, is like a special talent because I've viewed a lot of entrepreneurs. I speak to a lot of entrepreneurs. I've been in a lot of networks with entrepreneurs. I've had a lot of group coaching calls and, and whatnot. And honestly, it's it's rare to come across somebody who deals with situations in the professional manner that Jason actually does. And that in itself is a talent which takes you very far. He's, of course, doing insane numbers within his business. I think probably more so than than the other two. I'm not sure about Rob. But just with the lean team that he's got, I expect that he's making a shed load more profit. Just a little um, thing about Rob is that one month he, he, he taught me an important lesson. He came in and told me that he'd, he told the group that he'd made an insane amount of money. So he said the figure, I won't name it here. He said that he made an insane amount of money 
um, in the month in, in revenue. They'd collected that much cash. And then what he went on to say was, but we've spent about $100 more than that. So the profit was actually none, like it was minus $100. Meaning that in that month, I had made more than what he had. And I'm not sure what the model is that he's running right now, but I know for a fact Jason's model is higher in terms of profit margins and more sustainable in that sense. So yeah, that means a lot to me as well. Like I like to see that the mentor is actually doing the thing that I want to do in the way that I want to do it. He got me to five figures a month and will likely help me get to six. That's pretty self-explanatory of why I think that's a con. Tells you exactly what you need to do. There's no bullshit. He's a bullshit-free guy, which is fantastic. Just gives me the direction which was missing from, you know, the previous mentorship. Gives me direction. It's what you need sometimes. You just need to be told what to do by a coach, somebody who's done it before, somebody who's got your best interests at heart. The cons, right? So let's list the, the last three cons of this. His method of communication changed a few times, which isn't that big of a deal, but... At one point, I was just like, why don't you just keep it in one place? Keep it really simple. We have a WhatsApp group in in my business, and I just find that that is the most simple, the most scalable, and everybody loves it. So, yeah, it's constantly evolving his own business, which can be sometimes confusing. So what he will do is he'll talk about a lot of new methods that he's implementing. If he's you know figured out a new method on Twitter or new strategy with like LinkedIn or email or something like that, and then he'll get very excited about that and sort of start to tell the group. And he is sort of in two minds. Like this is what you've got to remember about mentors and gurus. He's like, they don't know what everything, they don't have all the answers. Uh, you know, that's just the case. I don't have all the answers. Nobody that you watch on YouTube does. Most people will most people who know a lot will admit this themselves they're idiots they they don't know that much the the most common answer to questions is i don't know we we need to test we need to see only time will tell so when jason comes in with all these different things it's kind of like he's unsure on whether you should test that as well and maybe you should do the twitter thing maybe you should go away and do more emails and stuff like that and sometimes that's not as concrete as you know what what i'd like but Again, at the same time, how is he supposed to know, <laughs> right? It's one of them things where it's like you've got to test and see what works. He can only give you guidance. He can give you um, clues, but never answers, right? That's just how it works. Uh, is a specialist in certain areas. So for example, right now, like I really need somebody who's an expert on blowing up the top of funnel of a business. That's the, the thing that I'm trying to do. Go more viral, get more views and whatnot. And Jason just doesn't, isn't really that he, he does have a big audience don't get me wrong but in the areas which i'm trying to do it he doesn't have too much knowledge so obviously that's a con for me at the moment but in terms of systems and stuff like that it's you know not going to be a big deal i can definitely afford to get somebody else in to help me with the top of funnel at this point as well the biggest takeaway from all of this is authenticity that's what drew me to buying into jason that's what drew me into buying into jeremy and um, Rob Quinn. Again, like getting into Rob Quinn and Jeremy's program, it wasn't perfect. And I would say that the person who's been the most transparent has been Jason as I've joined Jason's program. It's been very much what I expected it to be, which is fantastic. Normally when somebody buys, the thing that leads to customer satisfaction or client satisfaction the most is when expectations are met with the re with reality and, and those two align. And that's honestly what you want to create between your marketing and your product. That's how you'll create phenomenal results and smiles on clients' faces. But I hope that was insightful for you. I'm going to end the video here. If you liked it, subscribe to the channel. I'll be covering much more about online coaching and online entrepreneurship in the future on this channel. So, yep. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Goodbye.